Moving on, the world is just recovering from the worst hit of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was the most challenging situation the world had ever seen. At the same time, the most challenging time we have overcome and walking towards a better tomorrow. The pandemic hit all areas, sectors, classes, and made the world run unified and united. The global impact is immeasurable, but overcoming and navigating to move on to the right path is a must. Ladies and gentlemen, let's learn how to navigate through such challenges from the panel discussion on navigating choppy waters. I invite on stage Ms. Shweta Rajpal Kohli, Chief Public Policy Officer, Sequoia Capital, India and Southeast Asia, to take over as the moderator of this session. Let's give her a huge round of applause. <laughs> Welcome, ma'am. I now invite the panelists on the stage, Mr. Vishesh Rajaram, Managing Partner, Special Invest. <laughs> Mr. Mayank Kumar, Co-Founder and MD of Upgrad. <laughs> and Mr. Anand Vidurpuri, Partner, Bessemer Venture Partners. I now hand over the session to Ms. Shreta. Just checking if, yeah. Am I audible now? Thank you so much. Uh, an honor and a privilege to be here at uh, T Hub uh, and discussing a topic that is clearly on everyone's minds right now navigating choppy waters. We know that the first half of this year is now coming to a close, and I think one thing that everyone will agree on, at least, is that how different 2022 has been from. 2021 and then who could have imagined this year would bring with it tons of uncertainty um, some worrying trends around macroeconomic indicators around the world geopolit geopolitical you know a uh, strike that we've seen that has had an impact on the economy not just in India but around the world and, and compare it to the kind of exuberance that we saw say last year and you know the valuations the exits so how different is is this year looking is this something that is here to stay, or is it just, as, as Harsh was saying in the previous session, just a downturn cycle that we should be prepared to deal with because that's exactly how businesses work. There are upturns and there are downturns. And if we are in the midst of a real serious downturn, how do we navigate these choppy waters? So let's get cracking and let's first try and understand what's really going on uh, with us here. And Anant, let me first get your thoughts on the current environment as far as the startup ecosystem goes. What we're witnessing right now, is this a real downturn? Uh, are you worried? Uh, I'm not worried. <laughs> I think uh, I, I will totally, uh, you know, I think it's like when you go to a party, uh, you tend to eat a lot sometimes. And then, you know, your stomach hurts. Uh, but that's okay, uh, because you ate a lot. So I think that's the same thing. I think there was a lot of exuberance last year, which some of it was maybe not fully warranted. And today, you know, people are probably, it's like a pendulum, it's kind of going to the other side and people are very, very worried. But if you're a founder and, you know, what really matters is, you know, what's the product you're building? Are your customers paying for it? And your customers are the most important thing. Um, so we, we don't look at valuation as much. I wouldn't you know, worry about multiples, valuations, all that. I would just focus on your customers. And customers are still using software. Customers are still buying products. Uh, and I don't think that's going to change in the long term. So I wouldn't be worried. All right. So that's a very optimistic view coming from Anand saying he's not worried. Uh, there is real value in businesses. And, and you know there is, if I understand you correctly, you're saying that there was too much hype around the exuberance that we saw last year and then there is too much noise now around the downturn and we should just discount some of that and continue to, founders should continue to put their heads down and continue building their businesses. But Vishesh, uh, let's, let's go a little deeper into, into trying to understand uh, what's going on because let's at least look at, say, the way public markets are reacting. Now, many would say that that is an indicator of what's going on in the real economy in some ways. And uh, let's also accept the fact that 
while the pandemic uh, did not turn out to be as bad as what most people had expected, we're possibly seeing now after effects of that, you know, and the kind of fiscal and monetary stimulus that governments provided is something they can't continue to do. So what we're seeing now on the ground is real worry around, say, interest rates, around inflation, around the impact that all of that, you know, supply chains impacted because of, you know, rising uh, fuel prices around the world. And all of that will play out on real businesses. And it's time for us to get real about how some of this will impact startups as well. I think they're all, all excellent points. Um, clearly, cap, I mean, clearly COVID coming in led for different governments and different policy makers to, to take steps that could address problems that were then immediate, right? That led to capital being more easily available interest costs being low, and that is only going to last for some time. And when you started sort of seeing the end of it and people are sort of coming back and businesses are normalizing, a lot of those have sort of tapered out. And what that's, of course, led in the, um, a mix of that is possibly led for one, inflation, and two, cost of capital has gone up. Yeah. And I think the big impact of cost of capital going up is a reflection of assets being repriced or you know public market multiples being repriced or companies being repriced right and, and that will definitely have its ripple effect on how assets gets priced but i just like anand i'm an optimist and i think while the pricing of these assets are changing and are getting influenced by what's happening in other parts of the world and in public markets in india Fundamental businesses remain unchanged. Uh, they aren't disappearing or they're not going away. A lot of these companies have true customers. They're consuming, they're buying. The rate at which they're buying may change, and some of that has to do with just capital availability and flow. But the need itself is, is very foundationally strong, and that isn't going away. So then as investors and as founders and as ecosystem builders, you you possibly have to step back and say, these are businesses that you will build. These are businesses that you will build, but you know how you price them and how quickly you want to grow, you possibly have to be a little circumspect about that in the environment. But that aside, they, they're all businesses that will, will be there and will flourish and do very well. Actually focus on one sector uh, which has uh, which has been the focus in in more ways than one edtech my uncle and you know it's a sector that you operate in and it's uh, seen absolutely fascinating growth during the pandemic and you know many would say that there are you know decades when nothing happens and there are weeks when decades happen and that's perhaps the kind of focus that edtech saw during the pandemic and rightly so it found its rightful place uh, and uh, while the trigger was the pandemic it was clearly uh, a trend that was waiting to take off. Uh, share with us how a sector like EdTech would cope with a downturn cycle that we're seeing right now. No, I think uh, just um, two days back, I was saying in the last 24 hours, but I can tell you that just in one single day, I got two founders in education who said, I'm shutting down my shops uh, because it's not working out. So for all the positivity, there is a little bit of uh, gloom and doom where we are seeing companies not being able to scale and yeah. funding being a constraint. Uh, but if you actually look at Shweta, this is a question that I think I've been answering for the last two weeks. Every day somebody is asking exactly the same question. But I, when I'm talking about edtech, let me just talk about K through 12 first, sure. uh, because that's one sector that has uh, seen a big sort of shift happening. Um, so what happened during pandemic was a lot of offline institutions shut down, and therefore a lot of demand that was going offline moved online. Yeah. And uh, a lot of companies also invested aggressively on marketing. Uh, so there was a double impact. There was a vacuum and there was a marketing impact, and everything went up to the, to the hilt. Uh, but today with offline opening up and um, capital again coming into question, uh, uh, we are seeing A, some demand moving out of edtech. Yeah. So there is a growth impact for sure. Yeah. Uh, but the capital that one was floating into the sector for driving growth is now getting questioned that is this real growth or not. So what I do see right now happening, at least in, the, in some of the tuition sectors or some of the other sectors, is that you will see an impact where growth will get impacted. And a lot of experiments, so-called experiments, expensive experiments that some founders were running, they will start slowing down. Uh, 
But it's all for the right reasons. Uh, while uh, I agree with um, with both my panelists that they, when they said that, look, there is there's a capital that will move out, but customer demand is there. Uh, but as a founder, that amount of experiments and amount of new initiatives that one could end up taking will come down certainly. So the right. first impact is going to be that those experiments will come down, things will look much more saner. Uh, but if you see at tech, a large portion of the growth was driven by a very strong, aggressive sales team. And that sales ecosystem from a unit economics doesn't make that much sense if your ARPUs are not very high. Yeah. And I'm just talking about across the sector, whether it is K through 12, higher education, working professional, every sector is very largely sales driven. So you will see a lot of impact coming in where sales specifically will get impacted and companies will start looking for other means and ways in which they can reach out to the customer. But I agree to, um, both of them said, when they said that they are optimists, because market exists. If it's 1% penetration, it will go to 2% penetration. But the journey may be slightly more saner uh, than what it was in the last two years. Right, I like the term saner because uh, I think somewhere everyone agrees that what happens when uh, access to capital is so easy and capital is so freely available is what you see is, 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 is perhaps a marketplace and an ecosystem that's not real, that's not sane if I were to use my young's words. So are we getting into now a phase that is a more real? Uh, and is this crisis also an opportunity to redefine, to realign your priorities, to actually build real value and, and to quote what Harsh was saying in the previous session, focus away from valuations to value, you know, and, and what happens in an upturn is the valuation, what happens in a downturn is you build value. Um, you know, I've just got a request that we need to be, we need to wrap up this session by 1.15, so I'm going to jump straight into now getting solutions and advice from our panelists on how to navigate the crisis. What is the one advice you'd want to give to founders? You know, my young founders like yourself, Anant and Vishesh, founders who, who you would interact with on, on what is the prescription of the current downturn? Uh, do, you have, do you have any timelines on when we're gonna see this crisis, uh, you know, this, this sort of road to recovery move into real recovery? Uh, how long this downturn will last? And what would you advise founders on realigning their priorities, on belt tightening, on uh, on reassessing and building that value. Vishesh, let me start with you first. Yeah. So I, I think I, I think of the downturn more as just uh, you know growth recalibration, if I can call that. Yeah. Yeah. This sounds a little more positive for me, but uh, I think the um, uh, Mayank sort of gave the cue to that. I think the the, mo the most important thing we're suggesting to our founders is treat the capital to be more expensive than it was before. Um, do your experiments, but be very measurable yeah. on outcomes, and you know, be very circumspect about where capital gets allocated, and let's uh, let's only go after things that are a little more predictable. Uh, and I think that the window of time possibly is about six to eight quarters in in my mind. And I think that's the bound of time. The entire ecosystem is going to readjust itself for you know the sort of growth the the industries can offer, and how you want to price your capital or reprice your capital. But there'll be a lot of pain during these six to eight quarters, can we expect? So, you know, uh, obviously, the, the, as, as Anant would say, there's a lot of noise that you hear in the media, and then there's layoffs, and then there's cost cutting, and there's... So are we going to see that pain yeah, think, pan out, so uh, and get it'll get worse before it gets better? I think the important part to realize is that the, the startup, the venture, the investing ecosystem in India is fairly sizable. Yeah. So you will have some pain, for sure. Right. And the pain is going to be more visible in the large companies that have gone out and, and you know made those large marketing or growth or investments anticipating growth, which may not work to plan, and that's where you're going to see a lot more pain. The short answer is yes, there will be pain, and there's no other way to readjust that growth and readjust those asset prices. But uh, I think you know if you step back and look at this industry as you know an industry with cycles of 10, 15, 20 years then you're gonna see this every eight, 10 years. We saw this in 2008, we saw this in 2000, for various reasons. But in, in the ecosystem, you're gonna see some of these shocks every eight, 10 years. You just have to learn to keep moving from there. Yes, yeah, yeah. And the question fall, clearly remains how, how deep will that shock be this time around? I think that's something that most people are trying to, uh, it's, it's, hard to it's hard to predict these things, but try and make an assessment of, yes, there is shock, how deep is it, how bad is it? I, I think it will be deep. A few will lose and will lose heavy. Uh, but the brighter side is that there's still a lot of opportunity and growth ahead. Right. Mayank, your, so, your advice to every founder who comes no, to you and no, says, you know what, I may shut down my business. <laughs> no, my, the best part that I've seen is that my unit economics in the month of January 
then April, and then June is fundamentally different. And the good part, uh, I mean, Chwede, as you said, that look, everybody, all of us believe that the market is there, but because of what the situation's out there and the narrative that's there, and you always remember that at the back of the mind, look, capital is going to be difficult to get. Um, a lot of decisions that were pending have got accepted. What happened in one week in a, for a decade, it's now happening in one month. What would have taken me personally five years to execute, um, some secret that I'll just spill out right now, uh, we cut down our marketing spend by half, nothing happened to revenues. And this is not just me, but I can talk about five other founders who came and told me. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, so, but, but this is this is very prescriptive and very interesting data point coming from you. So you're saying that, you know, probably we were spending way more than required. Way more than required. And the same customers are coming from your own customers who are calling back and saying, okay, look, the product is good and they will buy it. But, they, and this, I'm just telling you, Shweta, this is for across multiple companies. They have come yeah. and tell me exactly the same thing. And half across spend, sectors, I guess. Across sector, half yeah. the spend, nothing happens on revenue. Uh, certain things that you as founder, anyone as founder would be doing as sort of large scale experiments, you go back to the basics and bare bones and the experiment still works. And you come out of that thinking that, look, I don't need 15 people to run this, I can do it with two people. And I, I guess the brighter side, as you said, Vishal, was that, um, uh, when you are pushed against the wall, you will come out with much brighter ideas. Uh, the idea that you would be afraid of taking earlier, today you can take it because unfortunately the best ideas come when you don't have an option. Yeah. And if you do not have an option, you will come out with the best ideas for running your own venture. Interesting. Anand, your thoughts there? It's hard to follow that, to be honest. Mank, I think he said pretty much everything that is really important for founders. And I think I'll just maybe, you know, try to not, uh, uh, you know, say the same things again. But I think it was just a resource allocation issue. There was a lot of capital available, so people threw capital at every problem. And like Mayank said, I wouldn't actually recalibrate growth. I will, um, I, and, and we've had these conversations in our portfolio. Uh, I would not ask any founder to recalibrate growth. I would ask them to do what Mayank said. Hey, this is the growth target, and you now have half the money to do it. Uh, so right. do it, and that's where founders earn their equity. That's where founders, you know, become like, you know, that's where uh, you know there's that uh, saying that you polish the diamond in the rough or something like that. I know it in Hindi. I don't know it in English, but <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's going to happen. You have to. You had too much of a resource. Now it's less, so you figure it out. And but Anand, is there going to be a premium and focus on uh, profitability and better margins like never before? Like, is there going to be pressure from investors to founders saying, you know what? Uh, we've, we've, you've got to turn profitable sooner than you had thought. Yeah, so I'll say something which is a little provocative here. I think long-term investors who've been in the ecosystem for, you know, decades, they will not change the way that they were investing. They will invest the exact same way and they didn't change the way they invested last year or two years before as well. I think folks who haven't seen cycles will swing to the other side. I think, you know, your fundamental unit economics are always important, but putting too much emphasis on growth like people did last year or putting too much emphasis on your profitability, none of them are good things. Right. So, uh, yeah, like I wouldn't push my companies to, oh, now let's start chasing profitability. No, that doesn't make sense. You're not, like you're building a venture back company which is going to only get to, you know, public markets in 7, 10, 12 years. You can't be reacting to knee jerk reactions. Like, you are the longest term capital yeah. in the market. Yeah. So, so I think fair point there. And as we wrap up, I do want to ask the three of you one question. And it is that, as you said, that, you know, investors who've been there and have seen these up cycles and down cycles would probably brush it off and say, you know what, it's another cycle and let's, we will get past it and let's realign priorities, let's do things that are right and then we'll move over it. There are others who are too early in their journey and may feel the impact of the bumps way more and may feel the shocks a bit more. But as we look back into what happened in the last two years, and everyone talks about frothy valuations, or everyone talks about how easily capital was available, is there one lesson, I wouldn't call it regret, because regret's a very strong word, but is there any lesson that emerges from what we saw? And, and we would say that there is a, there is a sudden shift in, in that mindset as well as in the, uh, in the overall perception. Uh, are there any lessons in, that, that we may have learned? Uh, that should be applied next time around. We see that same level of uh, upcycle. Anyone would like to take this first? Anything you'd do differently? Well, I guess uh, the part that we all tend to forget from time to time is that equity is expensive. Yeah. Um, so you have to sort of handle with care on what you do and how you do what you do. 
I guess the last two years allowed us to temporarily not remember that. And yeah. we all thought... Well, will, we, will we forget again is the point? <laughs> <laughs> or do we have to remind well, ourselves if, 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 not if, to if forget? If you look at history, we're quite likely to do that in six to ten years. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Mayank? I would say, say the same thing. I think um, um, equity is precious and that's something that uh, uh, we saw a different reaction earlier. Um, I, I mean, I, I, it would be... I mean, it, it's not sort of something sophisticated. I'll say focus on the fundamentals because everybody has to focus on the fundamentals. But I think one thing that many founders that when they come and talk to me, I just say that, look, then don't take the bheer child. Don't try to be part of the herd. Uh, yeah. um, there are certain things that you're doing because you're doing, you're supposed to do that ways. Uh, uh, but uh, sometimes don't read certain journals. Sometimes don't read certain newspapers. Sometimes don't read <laughs> certain articles because that pushes you to be part of the herd. And staying out of the herd sometimes is a good thing as... Uh, Anand said that, look, long-term capital guys will not jump in. So sometimes you have to be out of the herd to stay safe and not get hurt in the process. Right. Anand, lessons? Yeah, I think, you know, it's it's the same lesson each time. Uh, you know, greed is bad. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, like, when, like, like, we had, found, you know, folks chasing, you know, 300, 400, 500 percent growth. We had companies getting priced off five-year forward financials. Like, that's just greed, right? What else is that? Like, you just want to raise capital for the heck of it. So I think the only lesson is, like, when you are in a good time, remember the bad time. Uh, like, they say that uh, when you are going through a bad time, everybody prays to God, but when you're having fun, nobody prays to God. So just remember this time, the next time you feel that, uh, you know, it's easy to make money in venture capital. All right, on that note, we're going to wrap up the session, but it's been uh, short and sweet, but very important uh, takeaways from the three of you on navigating choppy waters that we're seeing right now. Clearly, we are in the midst of a downturn. Uh, how long and how painful this downturn is going to be is something that is hard to predict, but there's reasonable indication that the next six to eight uh, quarters are going to be tough, but it's also an opportunity for founders, for companies to actually build real value, to do a bit of belt tightening that was needed, uh, to become more real in building their businesses and finding a way to navigate through these very challenging times. Thank you all for sharing your perspective here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I request uh, Mr. Kshan to please present a token of our gratitude on behalf of T-Hub and the government of Telangana. Thank you so much to all the panelists and the moderator for a brilliant session. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I now request you all to please join us for lunch at the ground floor. Two o'clock, we have the winner of Comic Sun season one joining us for a stand-up comedy session at two o'clock. We request you to please join us back again. Thank you so much.